everyone thanks for visiting my channel today if you're new here welcome I'm Carol and I'm so glad that you stopped by I hope you will consider subscribing so first things first we are going to make and can up a balsamic onion jam that's from the all-new ball book and last year I made for you a bourbon bacon onion jam and many of you have requested a safe canning recipe for that I did explain that we cannot can that because of all the bacon that's in it but we are going to use most of the flavor profile that is in that recipe to make a safe canning recipe that is um, that leaves out the bacon so sorry guys we have to leave out the bacon but you're gonna have all of those amazing flavors but First things first, you all know that I've had quite a few life changes uh, in the last year, and one of them is this little darling. Her name is Callie. Uh, many of you have noticed her prowling around in the background and wanted a formal introduction. So here she is. Her name is Callie. She has quite a story. Um, my daughter's friend uh, found a litter of kittens that did not have a mama. They were just a few weeks old and uh, Her friend asked her if she would like one of them and she said no, I have um, More than I need but I think my mom could use a companion So she took one for her she took Callie and she nursed her with a bottle until she was old enough to be weaned and then brought her to me uh, a fun fact about Callie is she had unfortunately had an infection on her tail uh, when she when they had her, when they first found her, and um, tried to save her tail, but too much of it was damaged, so she that's why her tail is super short. Uh, they had to amputate part of it, but as you can tell, it has not stopped her. So anyway, this is Callie. She's a tremendous companion. I have grown to love her so very much, and I just wanted to introduce her to those of you who were curious. Okay, back to balsamic onion jam. As I said, this is from the all new ball book of canning and preserving. This is also going to be a low sugar recipe. So many of you request low sugar recipes. This is gonna be one of them. This is also gonna be part of our Christmas canning series, um, our Christmas gifting series. Not everything I do is canning, but this is gonna be part of that series because this makes a tremendous gift. You can use it to glaze meat. It's delicious slathered on a biscuit. It's wonderful on top of um, deviled eggs, um, stirred into mac and cheese. It's fantastic in a smoked gouda grilled cheese so lots and lots of lots of uses for it you can also use it to top a burger as they did here um and let's see oh you can also use it to make a salad dressing so with that being said we're going to get started it's also appropriate for this time of year because it does use some apple juice now in light of full disclosure instead of apple juice i'm using my reconstituted boiled cider i didn't have any apple juice on hand so i made uh i just reconstituted some of my boiled cider into apple juice for this recipe so another great reason to have boiled cider uh, handy in your refrigerator we need just a few ingredients we need two pounds of onions diced I used two extra large sweet onions made about two pounds and then I just diced them fairly small uh, the size is up to you we need some good balsamic vinegar make sure you use a good quality we also need some uh, maple syrup a little bit of salt and pepper a bay leaf the apple juice I mentioned we are going to need three tablespoons of low or no sugar pectin and we're also gonna use a half a cup of sugar. Now I am going to be using a half a cup of packed brown sugar. The recipe does call for white sugar, but sure, you can safely swap out sugars. I think brown sugar yields a uh, richer flavor and I really like it with the balsamic vinegar, plus it was in my original recipe of the bourbon bacon onion jam. So I'm gonna be using brown sugar, but you can use whichever sugar that you prefer. So we're gonna get started by combining the onions, the balsamic vinegar, the maple syrup, the salt and pepper, and the bay leaf. I have my two pounds of diced onions in my large, uh, Dutch oven large saucepan you want to make sure you use one big enough that gives you a little bit of room to groove um, and then we're going to add half a cup of balsamic vinegar make sure you use a good quality balsamic vinegar we also need a half a cup of good quality pure maple syrup not pancake syrup pure maple syrup I have two teaspoons of black pepper and a teaspoon and a half of salt here the recipe does call for white pepper I don't have any white pepper on hand, so I'm just gonna use black pepper. You can use either one. It's not gonna make that much of a difference in the flavor profile. 
And then we're also going to add one bay leaf. All right, so I have my pot on a medium heat. We are going to let our onions um, cook for about 15 minutes. We want them to get nice and soft and become translucent. Make sure you're stirring occasionally so that nothing sticks or burns on in your pan. Um, but we want to uh, let it cook and simmer for about 15 minutes. A couple of things that I wanted to mention while we're cooking things down here, you can see that um, it's been cooking for about half the time it needs to, but that my onions are starting to turn translucent and it, it, they're releasing some of their juices. So there's more liquid in there than what we started with. But I did want to mention, I did talk about how this is a low sugar recipe. So you need to make sure you're using the low or no sugar pectin. I'm using ball, but there are other uh, brands out there. And then the other thing we are going to do, you know you how much I love to put a carol twist on things. I am going to be adding some bourbon to my jam. You can come totally leave this out. It's completely optional, but you guys know me. If you've been around my channel very much, I love using liqueurs in cooking and in canning um, because they add so much flavor that you can't get any other way. So I'm going to be adding a couple of tablespoons of Maker's Mark bourbon whiskey, but again, that is optional. Okay, so our onions have been cooked for approximately 15 minutes. You just want them to uh, be translucent. It may take longer than 15 minutes. Most of mine have turned translucent. Um, so we are ready for the next step. I'm going to go ahead and take out my bay leaf. And we are going to add about two to three tablespoons of good bourbon. Again, that's optional. You can leave that out if you prefer. We're going to add two cups of apple juice. and three tablespoons of the low or no sugar pectin. Give all that a good stir. And at this point, you want to raise your heat up to high. And we want to cook this until it reaches a full boil that cannot be stirred down. Hey guys, I know I have a lot of steam going on, but I am at a full boil that cannot be stirred down. That just means that uh, when you're stirring, it's still boiling. So we're gonna go ahead and add a half a cup of packed brown sugar. You can use regular white granulated sugar if you prefer. We're gonna stir to dissolve the sugar and bring it all back up to a full boil that cannot be stirred down and we're gonna boil hard one minute. Uh, once we get there, we are all set for canning. Okay guys, we are all set for canning. We are gonna be canning this in the half pint jars, the uh, jelly jars. I do not have instructions for anything um, of a different size. We're going to ladle in our hot jam into a hot jar to one quarter inch headspace. Okay, once you're at a quarter of an inch of headspace, you're gonna use a debubbling tool, plastic butter knife, or chopstick to release any air bubbles. Then we're going to take a paper towel dipped in white vinegar to clean the rims. You wanna make sure there's nothing interfering with a good seal. We're going to center the lid and then apply our bands to fingertip tight. and in the canner they go. Okay guys, I did fail to mention earlier that this recipe is for water bath or steam canning. Most of you knew that um, we do not pressure can um, jams or jellies. And this is no exception, even though we are using some low acid ingredients, the onions are definitely low acid. Uh, so make sure you watch the amounts, but this is a safe and tested recipe and we are going to water bath or steam can it. I'm using my steam canner. You guys know that I love my steam canner. I had three quarts of simmering water in the bottom of my steam canner with the rack. Um, and then I've placed my lid on top and I'm going to bring it up to temperature. I have a dial gauge on top of my lid that tells me when I can start my processing time. If you are water bath canning, you wanna make sure that the water covers your jars by at least an inch, and you wanna make sure that your water is at a full rolling boil before you start your processing time. Once you are at the place where you can start your processing time, you wanna adjust your heat just to maintain. You don't want it boiling too vigorously throughout the canning process, and you don't want your steam canner's lid to be 
popping off uh, because it's boiling so hard inside. So we are going to process for 15 minutes. The other thing I wanted to mention, and most of you know this, so this is probably for newbies, uh, modern canning guidelines state that we do not need to pre-sterilize jars and lids um, if we're canning for 10 minutes or more. We're gonna be processing for 15 minutes, so I just washed my jars and my lids and rinsed them really well, set them aside. The jars, I made sure I used them hot, but the lids I just washed and set aside. So we are ready to go. Once you are all set, up to temperature, process for 15 minutes, and I will bring you back. Okay guys, I processed for 15 minutes and then let my jars cool for about five, and then I took them out of my canner. I did get five of the half pint jars and some little extra, probably enough for another four ounces or so. That's about what the ball book said it should yield. So I was really happy with that, but I want to show you what it looks like. This is some of what I had left over. Isn't that so pretty? Now, I do want to mention that the recipe does call for the white pepper, and I do believe that white pepper is a little more mild in flavor than black pepper. I use black pepper. I do love the black flecks. I'm not sure if you guys can see that very well on film. I do love the black flecks in it, but just know if you use black pepper instead of white pepper, it is stronger and it does add more kick. So if you don't want the kick, um, use white pepper or decrease the amount of black pepper that you're, you are using, but it tastes phenomenal. I highly encourage you to use the bourbon in it even if you're not a drinker I'm not really a drinker but as I've said a lot of times um, liquors just add and they just infuse great flavor into your cooking and your canning so I highly encourage you to add that to the recipe I will leave my original not safe canning version, an iCard here in a uh, link in the description box so you can take a look at the bacon bourbon onion jam um, and make that if you would like. That would be phenomenal as a gift for Christmas also, but it does need to be refrigerated. This is obviously shelf stable. I will also leave um, in the description box a slew of ways to use it. Um, it is a great condiment to have. Just know it is not really sweet. It is just very mildly sweet. We didn't add a lot of sugar. So it is not a sweet jam and it is definitely on the more savory side. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them for me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.